Hello everyone, uh, you're tuning into a re-recording of Zaina al shahrani's talk um, for the, the first Baal Language, Gender and Sexuality SIG online seminar. So thank you so much Zaina for making this available to everybody. Um, I'm Jay McKenzie and I'm the Early Career um, and Postgraduate Research Coordinator um, for this special interest group. Uh, so before I introduce Zaina, I'd like to briefly explain uh, what the Language, Gender and Sexuality SIG is. So we're a special interest group within the British Association of Applied Linguistics. That's what BAL stands for. Um, it's free to join the group. And if you'd like to be added to our mailing list, then please email me. Or you could also email Fraser Heritage. So as a group, uh, we provide a forum for researchers to come together and explore issues relating to language, gender and sexuality from a range of perspectives. Uh, we meet once a year and we're hoping to hold next year's spring event online. The group is based in the UK, uh, but we, we were keen to use this opportunity while kind of tra travelling opportunities are limited um, to reach out to outstanding scholars from around the world. So we're really lucky to have been able to do that. So the aim of this series is really to highlight some of the fantastic research uh, that's being done by postgraduate and early career researchers in the field, um, especially those that focus on research with marginalised and minority groups and intersectional research. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, I'd like to introduce Zaina al Shafrani. Uh, Zaina is a PhD researcher at Cardiff University. Her main interests are in gender representation and identity construction in media discourse. So she works with mixed methods, um, especially uh, combining critical discourse analysis with corpus linguistics. And more recently, Zaina's work has focused on integrating an intersectional approach in language, gender and discourse studies. Um, and she's going to be talking to us today about this aspect of her work. So um, I'll pass over to you now, Zaina. Hello, everyone, and thank you, Jay, for introducing me and for organizing this seminar series uh, and uh, giving me this chance to talk about uh, intersectionality in discourse and how it is analyzed and how it works in language. So um, let's get started. So this is the structure of the, today's talk. I'll start by giving a brief background, the uh, definitions and uh, theory of intersectionality. Then I'll move to the study, the methodological design and the data and analysis findings and um, end up with outlining the conclusion. So starting by intersectionality, uh, it can be generally and simply defined as interconnections and interdependencies among these different systems, such as but not limited to gender and race, and the relation and impact of those on the categories and their experiences, their real experiences. As a theory, uh, intersectionality has gone through different developmental stages, and I uh, and I uh, categorize them into three main stages, and I'll talk about them in the coming slide. And as a method, there are different, there were different exploratory trials to analyze intersectionality and to use it as a method of analysis, but there is no full agreement on specific method. And this is due to the complexity of intersectionality, which works on different levels and which uh, also to the complexity of social divisions and social lives. So starting by uh, intersectionality, it wasn't a new one. It, is, it wasn't a new notion. It uh, uh, can be traced back to the history of more than once um, when a woman like Synergy Truth, uh, who suffers both being a black and woman, um, and she became the first black woman's uh, human activist. And she was the first woman who won a case against a white man. Um, uh, but the term itself was first coined by Crenshaw to refer to the point where race and gender intersect to form inequality or discrimination against groups such as black women. However, this was criticized for being limited to the binary schemes, the binary schemes of being black and white and men and women, ignoring in this way other social uh,
We can't hear you now, Zaina. You've 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 got muted somehow. Zaina, you've been muted. I can't hear you say no, I don't think you can hear me either. <laughs> Keep talking and hopefully at some point you'll hear me. I can't hear you. <laughs> I can't hear you at all. Yeah, now it's uh, oh, okay. Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> Shall we repeat or what? Yeah, do, if you go back to, you could either go to the beginning or you could go back to the previous slide and I can cut out okay. the bit where we couldn't hear. I think if you go back one, are you going to go to the beginning? Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, and then I'll, I'll um, yeah, I'll, I'll cut out the bit. <laughs> okay, okay. I don't know what happened because I saw something uh, appeared on your screen here, in the small screen. Yeah, I put a message in because I was saying I was telling you I couldn't hear you, but you couldn't hear me. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think it's okay now? Is it fixed? Uh, uh, let's uh, let's start the. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. I think it's not the problem from this. I don't know. Now, can you hear me? OK, so let's get started again. Uh, I'll start. Are you recording now? Yes, I'm recording. <laughs> OK, so thank you, Jay, for introducing me and for organizing this uh, seminar series and for having me today. And it's actually a good chance for me to talk about um, intersectionality in this course and how it works and how it is used to construct social divisions in language. So let's get started. This is the outline of this talk. I'll start by uh, giving brief background for intersectionality, division theory and methodology. Then I'll move to the study and the methodological design and data, and I'll end up by outlining the conclusion. So, uh, intersectionality can be simply and generally defined as interconnections and interdependencies amongst different systems, uh, such as but not limited to gender and race and the relation of those and their impact on social categories, real experiences. Uh, as a theory, uh, intersectionality uh, has gone through different developmental stages, and they are mainly three, and I'll uh, talk about them in the coming slide. And as a method, there are different exploratory methods and trials to use intersectionality as an analytical tool and to analyze. But there is no a specific method. And this may be due to the complexity of intersectionality, the complexity of social divisions and social lives, and uh, also the, that have different levels. Uh, Intersectionality actually is not a new notion. It can be traced back to the uh, more than century ago when a woman like uh, Sunerja Truth, who suffers both being a black and woman, and she became the first uh, black woman's activist, and she was the first woman, black woman, who gained um, a case against a white man. Uh, however, the term itself was first metaphorically coined by Crenshaw to refer to the point where race and gender intersect to form inequality, 
and discrimination against groups and here for her uh, black women. Uh, however, it was criticized for being limited to the binary scheme, the two binary schemes of being black and white or men and women, ignoring in this way other social divisions and differences. And uh, here uh, the second stage came to include more social aspects such as class and sexuality. And here appeared what is called the dominance matrix, uh, which refers to the multiple force that cause disadvantage to some uh, categories. Then it was broadened to include infinite intersecting social divisions and to be applied to both advantaged and disadvantaged, creating an unlimited number of social uh, categories and divisions. Intersectionality in language and discourse. Um, there are um, three main, for Crenshaw, there are three main uh, frameworks for intersectionality. The first one is structural, the location of people in the social structure, political, which refers to the feminist movements, and the anti-racist politics, which add or contribute to increasing marginalization by um, thinking that all um, white are women and uh, all black are men and representational, which means the semiotic and language strategies used to construct and represent social categories in the text. And these representations are linked and are affected and affect also uh, the wider cultural factors. And here is our main concern, which is the representational or the textual. So the aim of the study is to explore how different social entities are constructed in discourse. Uh, and for this, the questions are, what are the main social systems uh, and subcategories are found in the data? And how are these discursively constructed? And this, this also may uh, entail how these are found in the text, how these systems and categories are found in the text. So, uh, in order to conduct the study, I have selected the case of Saudi women and I collected articles reporting on Saudi women BBC News website manually. The search ter terms where I have conducted and run an automated query to collect the articles using different strings referring to Saudi women, such as Saudi women, women, girls, uh, uh, females, etc. And then these were filtered and organized chronologically and then uploaded to the software of Sketch Engine and W Matrix to do the corpus analysis. And here is the quantification of the uh, data. So the methodological design, the study will be on um, levels, different intersectional levels. I'll, for this study, for this talk, I'll exclude the broader social contextual level and I will focus only on the intersectional representational levels which include further uh, sub-levels such as the systemic level, the social categories and the individual actors which will be uh, quantified and analyzed using corpus intersectional analysis uh, using methods such as frequency lists, keywords and uh, also then will be uh, go under qualitative intersectional analysis using different discourse analysis tools such as semantic, uh, semantic prosody and grammatical analysis. So starting by the uh, corpus analysis, frequency lists plus the social actor classification, I first started by uh, using W matrix to uh, produce semantic clouds, uh, which divided the data into semantic domains. And here they are organized in frequency. So the highest here is uh, terms or references to country and government, followed by those referring to gender, mainly female. And this is not surprising because the search terms are uh, Saudi women. But what is interesting is that there are mentions for male and they are not very low, they are considerable here. And the lowest in frequency are terms referring to education and sports. 
And in this way, the first impression is giving about the data and the social domains that may help to give us something about these domains, social domains that involve the social actors and categories. Uh, then I'll uh, started by producing the uh, frequency lists, and I have collected all the um, social uh, references to social actors, which have uh, more than 10 hits. Then I uh, categorize them into uh, groups according to their reference strategies using Van Leeuwen's uh, reference strategies nomination uh, uh, here we have different, and I have here another steps to do and to know the third person um, subject and object also. Uh, and to know more about who are these names for and how they are positioned in the data. So I'll looked at all the references and the names and the pronouns. And I tagged those for their gender role or any other distinguishing feature and classified them manually using Van Leeuwen's nomination, identification and classification strategies. Uh, and I ended with two types of gender categories which are identified into for women. There is the main group, the main general uh, category, which is women. And we have also uh, four intersectional subcategories. And for, for men, I have found uh, three main intersectional subcategories because the references to men in general are not that um, uh, high in the data. So here is the, uh, I found that about 71% of references to women is for the main general category, but there is also another considerable portion that needs uh, analysis. So this uh, 29 have been uh, categorized into uh, also further intersectional categories. So the first one here, gender intersects with function to form activists. The other, the second one, when gender intersects with the relation to men, to form victims image and nationality, gender and education to form educated women. Uh, then the position gender to uh, indicate female politicians. And by the complex here, I mean all of them are complex, but here I mean mixture of one of the four here, for example, educated victim. And here, interestingly, I have found that the activists are, have more frequencies than the others. Whereas the um, lowest in frequency are politicians, in spite of the fact that the, uh, these articles here are uh, reporting on the historical event of including Saudi women in the political field, and it um, attracts a lot of uh, international interest. But here there is no enough coverage. As for main individual subcategories, here I have found uh, three main subcategories. Uh, when position intersects with gender and nationality, this forms the elites or the royals. Religion intersects with gender and nationality, this uh, forms the clerics or religious men. Also, uh, relatives who are uh, or who include gender, nationality, and relation to women. And there are further uh, social. Uh, divisions, creations, or social differentiation between each member of these uh, groups or categories. For example, here in the royals, uh, there are examples here, further construction of individuals, age and relation to the leader, sometimes wealth. For example, the king's 32-year-old son, deputy crown prince Mohammed bin Salman here. You have a very a long string of words which includes different social aspects to uh, put this person on the top of the hierarchy of the social structure, uh, which is in contrast to uh, the 80 years old. I mean, in terms of age, the 80 years old 
King Salman and the billionaire or the wealthy businessman, Prince al walid bin Talal. This is just an example because there are further uh, differences in the data. Keywords analysis. So after that, I moved to the keywords analysis to more to know more about the uh, systems themselves because I said that um, there are different levels for analysis, the systems, categories, and uh, so individual social actors. Here, uh, I started by uh, doing the single keywords analysis, and I've done also the multi uh, keywords analysis, but most of the single words, keywords are proper names, about a half of the uh, 100 uh, keywords are male and female personal names, and this is, this is interestingly has been um, analyzed and categorized uh, in the first part. And the rest are mostly geographical names such as Saudi, geographical Jeddah, etc. And also there is a reference to religious social dimensions such as hijab, Wahhabism and fatwa, which is uh, absent from a reference corpus that I have used to uh, see what is absent in the Arabic corpus. It's not a, an Arabic corpus, it's it's Arabic organization which uh, produce English uh, articles reporting on Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Or uh, not, or not only Saudi Arabia. I mean the, the I mean the articles that I have collected reporting on Saudi Arabia, but this is um, international one. So I need more about the keywords. So I moved to produce the 100 multi keywords. And I've ended up with this uh, categorization. I have categorized them into gender, nationality, religion and other. Gender and nationality are found in the search terms. So this is not, uh, it's expected to find this uh, two uh, domains because of the search terms about the Saudi woman. But what is interesting is that the emergence of another domain or uh, social dimension, which is the religion. Uh, Saudi general intersectional system. This is an imagination for the intersectional system. Then I moved to the qualitative intersectional analysis to know more about the uh, three levels. And I used collocational analysis and concordance lines. So levels of language here that will be analyzed, lexical semantic and sem using the semantic prosody, the grammatical using the method of word sketching, which is produced by sketch engine, how they are pre-modified and positioned in the uh, sentence and structural um, by looking at wider windows of uh, texts using concordance lines to explore agency and role allocations and social actors, interaction, power relations also. So here, as for the systems, I have found that there are different naming references uh, to uh, refer to the system. Here, a country, kingdom, nation, state, society, and they are mainly defined or identified in their geographical or um, place uh, references, such as those uh, underlined in red. Then uh, also I found that they are identified or pre-modified by uh, religious terms, such as those underlined in blue. And finally, and less frequently, patriarchal and male dominated, which is a gender uh, domain. Here is a visualization for the kingdom sketching. Uh, here in the greatest part in pink, these are the pre modifiers, and they seem, for example, Gulf, conservative, dozen, Islamic, they seem uh, neutral. However, but uh, when one of these, uh, or when, this, um, when the system of the kingdom or the state intersects with the uh, religious dimension, for example, conservative system, dominant Muslim country, the intersectional identity is associated with terms like false, impose, constrain, where undesirable meaning 
is suggested of force and domination. And here is the general, what I found about the general category of uh, Saudi women. References to women are located as objects for powerful verbs like prohibit, ban, and oblige. These are only examples, there are many. Uh, passivated, like well, you can notice that in these uh, colorful concordance lines, they are mainly passivated. Women are banned, women are uh, obliged, women are permitted or not permitted or not allowed. And strong models frequently collocate with women, such as must, have to, should. Uh, can and could are frequently used with women, but in the negative form to show inability. Uh, other subcategories, these are examples of the other subcategories because of the limits of time, I'll not mention all of them. So the leaders are symbols of agency. They are always active. Uh, there are lexes of power allocated to them or associated with them. Uh, and material uh, processes are, uh, they are found also in within um, material uh, processes. For example, words like reform, grand chain, more promote and also you can notice a kind of metaphorical metaphorical meaning here um, verbs which show change material change and movement uh, religious men are uh, described as hardline forceful influential and conservative senior which shows their power also in the society their relatives uh, are the guardians who uh, perform and give permission and accompany their female relatives. Female activists, they are um, uh, depicted in the data as heroes and active actors who arrest, jail, protect, disdain uh, and release. But at the same time, they are the subjects of verbs like campaign, urge, welcome, taste, defy and vow, which shows also a, uh, again a kind of uh, activity and power. So here I could uh, end by uh, dividing all of them into different groups based on their power uh, and domination. The first one is uh, includes two female groups, uh, those activated, uh, oh, sorry, activists and educated women. The second one, which is less active or powerless, includes the typical a uh, type of Saudi woman, identity of Saudi woman, uh, when gender intersects with nationality. And uh, also, the, uh, when they are relatives to men, they, they are represented as less or powerless. And the last one is marginalized or underrepresented when gender intersects with a uh, position for female. Um, as you notice, there is no enough coverage and when they are mentioned, they are mentioned only as lists in groups, lists of names. So in this way, uh, we have noticed how language is used to, diff to uh, create social divisions and to uh, create a so social structure uh, with different dominating and dominated groups. Here is uh, the Saudi social structure as represented in BBC. And with uh, this one, the um, horizontal uh, line represents the gender hierarchy, whereas the other one represents culture, including religion and nationality. Um, those on the right are shown as national, whereas those on the left are shown as anti-national. And uh, uh, this uh, language also creates sub systems such as culturalism, activism, kinship, and victimism. So the conclusions, social categories are uh, linguistically constructed of different social aspects, which are selected and strategically used by the author. Language is a medium of creating representational divisions and differences that work on different intersectional levels. Social systems, categories, and actors are linguistically privileged, disadvantaged, or underrepresented, and this is linked to intersections of wider contextual aspects of culture, history, and policy. In this study, hegemonic masculinity is reproduced and highlighted in the texts, 
while in contrast, there is a kind of underrepresentation of a powerful female category, which is uh, the politicians. Language is used as a further social force that intersects with other social aspects to control and shape the representations of the social structure in the discursive context. Thank you so much for listening and for attention. Thank you. Thank you so much, Zaina. Um, that was really fascinating. I feel really privileged to have been able to hear your talk twice um, because definitely on the second listening, I kind of appreciated the kind of richness and the kind of dynamic nature of your results even more. And I think this will be really valuable um, to everyone in our group. Um, and thank you to everyone who's tuned in to the recording as well. Um, I just want to finish before we leave you uh, with a reminder that um, our next seminar, we'll be doing a second online seminar in February next year. Uh, we've got two fantastic speakers lined up, so we'll be joined by Lotta Bahayan and Ashley Moore, and they'll be talking about language, gender and sexuality in institutional contexts. But yes, I end with a round of applause for Zaina. Thank, thank you very much thank for recording that so everyone can access it. Thank you. Thank you very much.